Hello everyone, and from my cabin, where we literally just docked at a surprise country in Africa no less than like 90 minutes ago, welcome to Sailing with Soph, a podcast where I, Sophia, or Soph, take you along my adventures as a college student living and studying on a ship for about four months while my shipmates and I traverse through the ocean and travel to multiple countries across three continents. And yes, of course, one of those continents is Africa. In this episode, I'll be updating you on what's been going on in my voyage, but specifically about the itinerary, because I did just say that we have docked at a surprise country, and we're going to a country I never thought I would go to because it was not on the planned port or country for our voyage. But stay tuned to hear where we're heading. For a quick overview, I'm on the spring 2024 voyage from January to April of a study abroad program called Semester at Sea. Our port of embarkation was in Bangkok, Thailand, and since then we have sailed to Malaysia, India, and Kenya. Our next country was supposed to be Mauritius, which is a small island country in Africa. However, our predestined route has changed. So let's get into what happened exactly. A few days ago, at around 8 p.m. ish, one of the deans got on the intercom, which announces to the whole entire shipboard community. And typically, by the way, this does not happen this late at 8 p.m. The last time is probably, I want to say, around 5, 5 ish, 6. Anyways, the dean, she called all the faculty members for a meeting in a room very last minute. And hearing this was interesting, you know, a little suspicious looking. There were definitely some people, some WhatsApp group chats thinking, ooh, what's going on here? Possibly having second thoughts about Mauritius, but we had no idea really what was going on, of course. Then at about 8.55 p.m., one of the deans, the same dean, I think, said on the intercom, all voyagers, please report to the union at 2100, which is 9 p.m., by the way. And the union is the place where all the voyagers on the ship meet and gather. It's our main spot to come together as a ship community. But We literally got five minutes notice for this meeting, so we all knew it was something important, something serious. But that alone, of course, was very suspicious. Again, I didn't know what to expect. I really didn't. I wasn't sure if there was like a huge serious issue on the ship or something else, someone getting kicked out, something really terrible found in someone's room, too many sick people on the ship, which I heard a rumor about, which would prevent us from disembarking. I really had no idea what to expect. Once we all arrived in the Union, which I was surprised how packed it got immediately, given the five-minute notice. But the head dean of the ship tells us that due to forecasted cyclones in Mauritius, or coming to Mauritius, the waters, and a tropical storm approaching the Indian Ocean, the ship had to turn around. And when she was saying this, the ship was already in the process of turning around. And hence, we would not be going to Mauritius. There were definitely some gasps, like... (gasps) No, people were showing their emotions. I tend not to show emotions in public. There are probably some tears shed by other people. I want to touch on a little bit more about what's going on in Mauritius. They're expecting a cyclone. And I just learned today that the best case scenario would be for the cyclone, which is just another word for a hurricane, by the way. Who knows why they have two different ones. But the best case would be for the cyclone to hit during low tide. And the worst case is if it times perfectly when there's a full moon or a new moon in the sky because news to me this is like a little reporting section i guess but in my global studies i learned that ocean tides which are the rise and fall of ocean water along coastlines they are affected by the moon which i had no idea about i find that kind of fascinating and then when you have a full moon or a new moon which are both when the sun moon and earth are all in the same line the same axis this somehow impacts the ocean waves, which is crazy. So all this sciencey stuff aside, hopefully Mauritius is not terribly affected. Hopefully the land is okay and the people stay safe because they dealt with a cyclone a few weeks ago. And Port Louis, which is the port where we were supposed to be docking at, arriving in, was badly affected. And I saw some pictures where cars were totally under submerged in water. Pretty terrible. It's very unfortunate about Mauritius. But Mauritius aside, back to the Union story where we're finding out this news. The next question I'm sure many of us Voyagers were thinking, of course, when we heard the news was, so where are we going now? And just a little background, Semester at Sea actually preps for diversion ports, they call it. 
So every voyage has backup ports. God forbid there's a strong reason you cannot go to a country and you must have an itinerary change. So there's probably at least eight backup ports, but I'm not sure the specific numbers. Believe it or not, the country we rerouted to was not on our original diversion port list. So that is interesting. Now the country the dean told us we would be arriving in and we have arrived already is Mozambique. There were some claps. I'll be honest, just like I had never heard of Mauritius before semester at sea, I had never heard of Mozambique before. I immediately went to the Safari app on my phone and typed Mozambique and I feel this is important just to state. Just so you know, Mozambique is spelled M-O-Z-A-M-B-I-Q-U-E. However, when I typed up Mozambique in the Safari search bar, I typed in M-O-S-A-N space beak as in B-E-A-K. So spelling aside, I really didn't know anything about Mozambique, but hey, that's what I'm on semester at C4 to learn. Fortunately, Google corrected me and I quickly learned something about Mozambique, how to spell it. Also, fun fact, in global studies, I learned in a video that Mozambique has all five vowels in its name, A-E-I-O-U. And in case you don't know where Mozambique is, like I didn't, just so you can orient yourself, so I can orient you a little, it is west of the island countries Madagascar and Mauritius. Madagascar, I always think of that one animation movie. I can't remember the name of it, but hopefully someone remembers. Mozambique also borders countries you might be familiar with, such as Tanzania, South Africa, which is our next country woohoo and it also borders zambia zimbabwe those are just a few in all seriousness though i am very excited for mozambique wherever i am i would just be thrilled because it's a new country new place to explore no complaints no complaints we've just docked in maputo hopefully that's a fine pronunciation of course a little disappointed about not going to mauritius i would be happy wherever i go and for me, there's absolutely no reason to complain. Also, fortunately for me, I did not have any personal plans. Like I know a good amount of people on the ship did booking an Airbnb in advance. So fortunately, no major financial losses for me. I also didn't book anything because Semester at Sea has something called field classes. And for pretty much all the classes you take on the ship, you have to devote one day where you go with your professor and all the students in your class in one port for at least, I don't know, seven, eight hours, and you learn about whatever the topic of your class is, explore the country, whatever. And I was supposed to have two of these field classes in Mauritius, and now that would all be kaput. So these mandatory class commitments that are about, again, eight hours of your day, and did I not mention, they're typically a decent percent of your grade. In most of my classes, I think it's at least like 15 to 20 percent of your grade, somewhere in that range. I was very excited for my field classes. One, for the first day in Mauritius, we were only supposed to be there for about four days. I was supposed to have my video production field class, and I was so excited. For one, this is by far my favorite class on the ship, and we were supposed to visit like a top film school, a film production place in the country, and even speak to a prestigious producer. And our professor later told us that he found out apparently the president of the country was coming and a bunch of media people were coming. So there were supposed to be a lot of Mauritians in attendance at this event. That would have been really cool and interesting to experience. But I feel bad for my professor because I can't imagine, like imagine how much time and planning goes into this field program then reaching out to these people the companies contacting with many higher ups and then letting them know that we're not even coming less than a week before that must be awkward but hey there's nothing you can control as for my other field class i was supposed to have my oceanography one the second day in mauritius and we would go snorkeling in the awesome mauritian waters because I mean, it's a very small island country. The water would be awesome to explore. Luckily, I just found out today, though, that my field class for oceanography just got moved from Mauritius to the second day in port in Mozambique. So I'm very excited for that because we'll be snorkeling. And that just gives me a day of not having to plan anything, which is always nice. But I think my professor said like 90 kids will be on this because all the oceanography sections will be doing their field class on that day. But I'm very excited to see how that goes. Even though oceanography, boy, that class kills me. I just am not a science person. 
I can't say it enough. Now, as I said before, we were only supposed to have four days in Mauritius, which would have been our shortest amount of time in port. But now we will actually be in Mozambique for only two and a half days. So a very quick trip. Of course, still so excited because like, how can you not be excited going to a new country? Everyone I've spoken to has never been here, even the workers on the ship. So my two favorite dining hall staff, Dean and Renz, they both have not been here and we're only here for such a short amount of time. I was curious if they would even be able to get off from work or how that works, but they still don't even know if they'll be able to get off. I know one of them said today that they could potentially get off some time today, which is interesting because the students are not allowed off. Maybe I misunderstood, but hopefully they get the chance to explore. And now even though we're in Mozambique for a short amount of time than we would have been in Mauritius, during the union talk with the dean, we found out that our next port, which is Cape Town, South Africa, we will be arriving two days early. And I feel like everyone on this ship is so excited for Cape Town. I'm very excited. I want it to be my big adventure port to do a bunch of adventure things. Maybe skydiving, bungee jumping would be sick. Even though, let me just say, if I do those things, I may not be able to talk about it because if Semester at Sea finds out while I'm on the voyage, I could get into some trouble. I've been talking to some people and everyone is thinking of skydiving and doing something that's apparently forbidden. It's forbidden because it's not covered by the insurance that Semester at Sea provides you with, but I will certainly be talking about it on my podcast. I just maybe can't make it public exactly. But arriving two days early in South Africa, everyone was clapping for, so that was nice to bounce out the sad news about Mauritius. All right, so that's really all I have for this episode. I really wanted to just update everyone on the itinerary change because that was interesting. Oh my gosh, how could I forget? So the day of this itinerary change going to Mozambique. So there's a school store on the ship and I finally bought some clothing. I was very excited because I got this awesome light blue hoodie. Oh, amazing. And let me say this ship is hot. Like, I don't know why no one said the ship was hot, but I could never wear sweatpants and a hoodie. But even though I bought a hoodie, of course, I'm going to wear it. So as I go to the school store, I buy the hoodie. Then I also buy, they have a t-shirt, which the design of it is the whole itinerary of our voyage. It says all the countries we'll go to, their flags. So it has Thailand, Malaysia, India, Kenya, Mauritius, South Africa, Germany, everything. Of course, I buy this on the day that we freaking find out that we won't be going to Mauritius. I just find that hilarious. Even some people I I was talking to, they're like, hey, your shirt is telling a lie. And I would say, I know, I literally got it the day of. So I would still get that shirt no matter what. One, because I just need more of those shirts. And two, it's a cool shirt. I can never forget about this voyage. Well, probably be a huge highlight of my life. I thought that was kind of funny because literally I got it the day of. Regardless of that, I want to jump into my closing segment of my episode, which is the gratitude section, where I say three things I'm grateful for. So the first thing I want to say I'm grateful for is, oh, by far, the basketball court. I love the basketball court here. Although it's wicked tiny and the floors are awful, I think it has one of the best views on the ship because it's at the highest point you're allowed to go to on the ship as a voyager or as a student. And one, of course, I love basketball, but just playing music from your speaker. I played a lot of knockout with people. Luckily, I have some friends who also like basketball. So that's been great. And then I've been able to meet people through basketball. I'm very grateful for one, bringing my basketball on the ship, but two, just for the amazing views you get. The fact that there even is a basketball hoop on the ship is awesome. So I'm going to say that. Also, I find it funny. Do you ever, like you meet someone new, you've never seen them before, and then you somehow see them again and again and again? I met a kid the other day and I think this is hilarious I met him playing basketball and then I swear I've seen this kid everywhere ever since I guess the point is you'll definitely come across people who you have never met before on the ship which of course is a good thing second thing I'm grateful for ooh, I want to make another episode about this but stargazing we had a night of stargazing it might have turned into a fail but more on that later but either way looking up at the sky when it's dark out it is just beautiful. I'm really going to miss the scenery on semester at sea. It's something it's just hard to take in every single day, but it is so nice. Even now that the sun is setting earlier, so when I get out of class at like 6:30, I head up to Lido, the restaurant you can eat outside at, and it's pretty much getting dark by that time. I just want to sit outside and admire the stars because 
it's not something I really have done much in my entire life. So I want to take advantage of that. And when I'm in the middle of the ocean with nothing blocking my view, like you can see everything, my whole eye, the whole peripheral is the ocean, the skies, the clouds, the moon. It is just magnificent. And the third thing I'm grateful for, I just want to say the sea again. The sea is just so, so nice. I actually had I had a presentation for my oceanography class. Let's just say probably the worst thing I've ever done in a while. I was thinking to myself, looking at the ocean, Sophia, and as I was preparing for this presentation and doing the work, blah, 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 I was thinking, you know what? There are better things in life than this and this is not so important maybe I was just trying to rationalize myself from from I don't know what but hopefully if I want to go to grad school this terrible project of mine does not ruin my life but the seas are just so god darn nice and they've been super blue they've also been a little rocky lately before arriving in port there was one day where who was the worst waves we've had the worst tides currents trying to use my science terminology here I'm a fan when the ship is rocking and it's feeling turbulent I find it fun even though I feel like I look like a goofball when I'm walking because I can't walk in a straight line but just always 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 grateful for the amazing scenery around me the sea the ocean I am going to miss it so much I don't want to be nostalgic though because let's just end this episode here thanks so much for watching stay tuned for future episodes keep sailing with me and I'll keep bringing you along until next time sincerely Soph